Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into Missing Each Other, a compelling exploration of human connection in our rapidly evolving world. Authored by Edward Brodkin, an associate professor of psychiatry at the Perelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania, and Ashley Palathra, a clinical researcher and therapist currently pursuing a PhD in clinical psychology at the Catholic University of America, this book is a remarkable synthesis of scientific insight and therapeutic wisdom. In Missing Each Other, the authors showcase their vast expertise by dissecting the nuanced complexities of human relationships, providing their readers with the tools to not only understand, but also enhance their own connectivity with those around them. The narrative, while deeply steeped in scientific research, manages to retain a personal and approachable tone, making it a comprehensive guide for anyone interested in better understanding the intricate dance of human bonding. Who is the book for, you ask? Well, it's for everyone. If you are feeling disconnected and long for deeper connections with those around you, this book is for you. If you're a bad communicator seeking ways to connect more effectively and meaningfully, this book is for you. Lastly, if you are fascinated by the psychology of alienation and yearn for insights into human behavior, missing each other should undoubtedly be on your reading list. Listen in as we dissect, interpret, and delve into the depths of this enlightening exploration of human connection. Enjoy! Missing Each Other How to Cultivate Meaningful Connections Introduction Dive into the science of connection. Do you ever stop to wonder why, despite living in densely populated cities and being a mere click away from interacting with someone on the other side of the planet, many of us feel disconnected and alone? It's not the physical distance or lack of opportunities for communication that's the problem. It's the way we engage with each other. Enter the complex realm of human connection, deeply rooted in our neurobiology and psychology. Allow yourself to be introduced to the foundational pillars that hold this delicate network of interaction. The state of being attentively relaxed, active listening, comprehending, and reciprocating responsiveness. Unlock the ability to demolish the walls that stand in the way of genuine human interaction. By exploring this synopsis, you will unearth some intriguing revelations. Discover what binds NBA superstars and contemplative monks. Unravel the secret behind Oprah Winfrey's widespread allure and comprehend how artificial intelligence, exemplified by Amazon's Alexa, falls short in mirroring genuine human companionship. Part 1. Forge deeper bonds with the art of attunement. Picture yourself on the doorstep of your friend's house. As she opens the door, her usual warm smile is absent, replaced with a subdued greeting and a trace of a frown. Once you enter, she shares that her beloved pet has just passed away. What's your response? It's contingent on her state of mind. If she is deeply grieving and yearns for solace, she might need you to be her emotional anchor. Alternatively, if she's averse to wallowing in sorrow, she may appreciate some light-hearted distractions. This intuitive act of sensing the emotional landscape of others and responding suitably is termed attunement. It forms the cornerstone of human relationships. Let's delve into the essence of attunement. This skill aids us in forging robust and intimate connections. It's interesting to note that humans, being inherently social beings, have harnessed mutual cooperation as a survival tool throughout history. Hence, we've evolved a strong compulsion for connecting with our kin. This urge to bond is evident right from infancy when babies instinctively gravitate towards the warm and comforting faces of their caregivers. As we mature, we hone this instinct into refined social capabilities that facilitate healthy relationships. To put it simply, Attunement is the ability to intuitively perceive and interpret not only our emotions, but also those of the people around us, consequently aligning both to reach a mutual understanding. When two individuals are in tune, 
they experience profound intimacy and connection. The concept of attunement is versatile and can manifest in a multitude of scenarios. It could be the shared joy between a parent and their child during a fun activity, or the intellectual stimulation between two scholars engrossed in a meaningful conversation. Jazz musicians intuitively synchronizing their rhythms in an improvised session is also an instance of attunement. What binds these diverse situations is the presence of a powerful emotional bond. Sadly, our hectic contemporary lives, combined with the transient and often superficial interactions on social media, diminish the opportunities for genuine attunement. Consequently, feelings of disconnection and isolation are rampant. But don't despair. We can reintroduce meaningful attunement into our lives, and we'll delve into how as we progress in the summary. Part 2. Begin your journey to attunement with relaxed awareness. Envision this scenario. Your friend is weaving an intricate narrative about his recent relationship turbulence. The complex issue is crucial to him, and you genuinely wish to grasp all the nuances. Yet you find yourself entangled in your own thoughts, preoccupied with impending work pressures, juggling your mental to-do list, and battling an increasing urge to rest. The persistent noise of these thoughts obstructs your ability to truly connect and understand your friend. Does this sound familiar? Well, it all boils down to your mental and physical state, which are perhaps a tad too strained to pave the way for genuine attunement. But don't fret, there is a way out. The first step to attunement is fostering a state of relaxed awareness, a mental and physical state of calm attentiveness. Establishing such awareness is essential for opening oneself up to other people's emotions and clearing the path to deep connection. Otherwise, your mind might be too preoccupied with other distractions to fully concentrate on your interactions. But what exactly does one mean by relaxed awareness, and how can one attain it? Picture being in a serene, tranquil state, but still attuned to your internal experiences and the world around you. To put it simply, it's about striking a delicate balance between relaxation and sensitivity. Famed psychologist Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi refers to this state as flow. Take the example of professional athletes like Michael Jordan. When they are in the zone, they display acute awareness of their surroundings while still managing to execute complex physical maneuvers with tranquility and precision. The good news is, you don't need to be an NBA legend to achieve this state of flow. By practicing mindfulness meditation, you too can cultivate a state of relaxed awareness. Find a comfortable position and take deep, calming breaths. Tune into your body and consciously relax any muscle groups holding tension, rather than attempting to completely empty your mind. Let your thoughts flow naturally, simply acknowledging each one as it passes by. By consistently practicing mindfulness, you will develop an enhanced understanding of how your mind and body react to stress. Crucially, you will learn to consciously temper and alleviate these responses. Over time, you will perfect the art of summoning this state of relaxed awareness, thereby laying the groundwork for genuine attunement. Part 3. Hone your listening skills to foster deeper connections. What makes Oprah Winfrey a global icon with an audience of millions? Apart from her charismatic personality, The real secret lies not in how she talks, but how she listens. This captivating ability to make others feel heard has resulted in some of the most stirring interviews of her career. While her knack for empathetic listening may seem unique, it's not an exclusive talent. Just like any other skill, listening too can be honed with persistent practice. Listening is far more than merely the physical act of hearing. On a typical day, we just hear people's words. Our ears pick up the conversation and distill the essential details. This surface-level hearing suffices for straightforward interactions like sharing directions. But to establish a deep and meaningful connection, you need to dive into the realm of profound listening, which comprises three integral components. Firstly, you need to give your undivided attention to your conversation partner. This involves drowning out all external distractions 
and immersing yourself in the myriad ways people express themselves. Profound attention involves not just hearing the words, but also understanding the speaker's tone, facial expressions, and body language. These subtle cues lend valuable insights into the person's emotional state. Next comes synchrony. It's the subconscious mirroring of your conversation partner's tones, expressions, and movements. Interestingly, this mirroring is not just superficial but also extends to our neural circuitry. When two people engage in a deep conversation, their brain cells activate in unison, further enhancing the bond. Lastly, deep listening incorporates emotional empathy, the ability to feel what your partner is feeling. An instance would be empathizing with a sad narrative to the point where you also experience melancholy. This empathetic resonance imparts a powerful comprehension of the other person's emotional state. When you can catch another person's feelings, it's a clear indicator that you're making progress on your journey towards attunement. Part 4. Unlock the secrets of understanding through cognitive empathy. Imagine two friends, Naomi and Oliver, meeting up for a coffee catch-up. However, things don't go as smoothly as planned. Oliver shows up a quarter of an hour late without an apology, and his responses to Naomi's cordial inquiries are curt and abrupt. Leaving the coffee shop, Naomi is left feeling that Oliver has transformed into a self-centered individual. However, unknown to Naomi, Oliver was distracted due to some distressing news from his doctor. If Naomi was aware of the circumstances influencing Oliver's behavior, she might have shown more empathy. Conversely, if Oliver could perceive Naomi's perspective, he could have been more open about his situation. Both friends could have greatly benefited from a deeper sense of understanding. There is an unparalleled gratification in feeling comprehended by others. A sense of profound comfort envelops us when people around us truly understand our emotions, aspirations and motivations. It's what we yearn for in our friendships and romantic relationships. However, more often than not, the opposite transpires. We either feel misjudged or fail to genuinely understand others. This communication gap springs from a psychological phenomenon known as misattribution. Misattribution manifests when we misinterpret the basis of someone's actions. Such misconceptions are inevitable since no two individuals share identical experiences or expectations. An action that seems impolite or illogical to you may seem entirely acceptable and rational to someone else. So, how do we bridge this gap? The answer lies in practicing cognitive empathy. While emotional empathy involves resonating with someone else's feelings, cognitive empathy ventures into the domain of understanding. It seeks to comprehend what another person is thinking. To truly understand another individual, it's important to view the world through their lens. No small feat, admittedly. Developing cognitive empathy starts with consciously stepping back in social situations and examining them from an unbiased perspective. Instead of reacting impulsively to Oliver's seemingly rude behavior, Naomi could have paused and tried to understand the reasons behind his actions. And could she ever see herself behaving similarly under specific circumstances? While it takes a bit of imagination and a shift in viewpoint, asking these questions can open doors to truly understanding another person's perspective. Part 5. Finding Harmony in Mutual Responsiveness Imagine two figure skaters elegantly gliding across the ice, their movements perfectly in sync. Now envision a stand-up comedian playing off the rhythm of the audience's laughter, landing another punchline just as the guffaws start to peak. Then consider a pair of close friends talking deep into the night, one actively nodding and reacting as the other pours her heart out. At first glance, these scenarios seem starkly different. However, if you take a closer look, a common thread weaves them together. In each of these instances, individuals are acting in perfect harmony with each other. Their emotions and actions are intertwined, constantly shifting and adjusting to the rhythm of their interaction. This underlying element is called mutual responsiveness, the final piece of the puzzle 
that cements intimate attunement between two individuals. So how do you achieve attunement? The secret lies in meeting people where they are. Recall attunement as the ability to perceive another person's emotional state. We've previously discussed how cultivating relaxed awareness can set the groundwork for attunement and how synchrony and cognitive empathy can help bridge the gaps that distance us from others. Mutual responsiveness happens when you put all these elements into action. In essence, it's the next step after you've achieved attunement. It's about attending to your partner's mental and emotional state and proactively meeting their needs. While this often requires conscious effort, it can also occur instinctively. Consider how a parent might crouch to the child's level and use a funny, high-pitched voice to connect with a toddler. By anticipating the child's mindset, the parent is responding in a way that establishes the best connection. When peers interact, this innate desire to accommodate each other leads to a dynamic known as contingent responsivity. When successful, each person anticipates and responds to the signals given by the other, leading to a lively exchange. This contingent responsivity forms the foundation of any social situation demanding fluidity, ranging from a basic conversation to a high-energy improv comedy sketch. Mutual responsiveness also plays a crucial role in resolving conflicts. For instance, if someone is upset, it's possible to dial down their fervor. How? By responding similarly, but slightly calmer. When you mirror another person's emotion and reflect back a more subdued version, you not only acknowledge their emotional state, but also extend an invitation towards tranquility. If you've achieved attunement, your offer will be graciously accepted. Part 6. On the brink of attunement, AI's uncanny valley. Picture this. You're secluded in a room, engaged in a text-based conversation with an unseen entity in the neighboring space. You type out sentences, receive responses, ask questions, and get answers. Now imagine that your chatting partner isn't a person, but an intelligent machine. Could you tell the difference? How long would it take you to realize? This is the crux of the Turing test, proposed by British mathematician Alan Turing in 1950. So far, no machine has managed to successfully cross this testing line, but efforts to build a machine that can achieve this feat are ongoing. The eventual goal? To reach artificial attunement. Let's dive in. Sophisticated computers are inching ever closer, but they have yet to perfectly mirror attunement. In the realm of science and technology, the race to create machines that can think and act like humans has been on for decades. Despite several attempts, achieving true artificial intelligence, AI remained a distant dream until recently. The advent of machine learning technologies has pushed the limits, enabling machines to outplay humans in intricate games such as chess, Go, and poker. These advancements have also moved machines closer to mimicking attunement. However, it's vital to note the stark differences between genuine human attunement and its artificial counterpart. Humans connect with each other on a deep emotional level using empathy as the link to share feelings and perceptions. In contrast, machines simulate this process. AI isn't truly empathetic or understanding. It merely collects data to fine-tune its programming. If you've ever interacted with a virtual assistant like Apple's Siri or Amazon's Alexa, you've probably noticed that while they can generally comprehend and respond to your words, the interaction lacks the natural fluidity of human conversation. But who's to say that this won't change? Amazon is developing technology capable of analyzing human vocal nuances like pitch and cadence. This innovation could enable future Alexa versions to discern their owner's emotional states, helping machines match the emotions they detect and more effectively mimic attunement. However, the prospect of artificial attunement raises several ethical concerns. There's the potential for misuse with companies leveraging this technology to coax individuals into revealing personal details or purchasing certain products, and then there's the fear of human relationships being compromised. Could the ease and gratification of artificial intimacy make us prefer machine interactions over human connections? If computers ever manage to master attunement, we could witness a societal shift 
of a magnitude we've yet to comprehend. We'll delve deeper into this fascinating idea in the next segment. Part 7. Starting small, but going big. The transformative power of attunement. Imagine the nitty-gritty issues you're wrestling with in your everyday life. Maybe it's a roommate who isn't pulling their weight with the household chores, or a co-worker whose stress levels rise way too quickly, hindering effective collaboration. Although these issues may seem relatively minor, they can still create discomfort in your life. How can you navigate these friction points? That's where attunement comes in. The tools it equips you with, relaxed awareness, active listening, and mutual responsiveness, can pave the way for harmonious interpersonal relationships. But let's not stop at the small victories. What about those larger, seemingly insurmountable problems in your life and in society as a whole? Could greater attunement help address those too? The takeaway here is that attunement may start with little steps, but its impact can be monumental. Sure, moments of attunement can feel like isolated instances of profound connection, but they aren't meant to be solitary occurrences. Attunement is a practice, something you consciously strive to achieve and maintain over time. If you want to extract the full potential of attunement, it's essential to make it a habit and integrate it into your daily routines. Begin with baby steps. Perhaps you're bracing yourself for a stress-inducing social situation. Why not take a moment to foster some relaxed awareness beforehand? This is where techniques like controlled breathing and meditation can be your allies. During the interaction, periodically check in with yourself. Are you actively listening? Are you comprehending what's being shared? Is your response in line with the spirit of mutual cooperation? With consistent practice, such actions will come naturally to you, and moments of attunement will increase in frequency. In the long run, your life could become significantly less stressful. But the potential of attunement extends beyond individual lives. Think about the stubborn societal issues that it could potentially address. Contemporary politics is a perfect example. Discord is rampant, often magnified by people's reluctance to listen and understand each other's perspectives. Emphasizing attunement could steer both leaders and ordinary citizens towards points of agreement, or perhaps carve out new pathways for cooperation. Though the concept might seem lofty, real-world examples of how it could work are already appearing. For instance, Sensitive and controversial issues like systemic racism and police brutality are intensely charged both politically and emotionally. However, movements such as Black Lives Matter have made strides in bridging these divides. The key to their progress? Attunement. By promoting challenging conversations about racism, encouraging active listening to others' experiences, and fostering understanding, moments of attunement are created. Undoubtedly, There's a long journey ahead, but meaningful progress is within reach if we continue to strive for connection. Final summary. The core insight to draw from this narrative is, in our fast-paced, technology-driven world, establishing genuine connections with those around us can often be a challenge. However, cultivating certain habits can lead to a state of emotional attunement with others. These include practicing relaxed awareness, deeply listening to others, and engaging in mutual responsiveness. Over time, these elements can render your interactions more impactful and fulfilling. By incorporating these practices into your life, you can transform your relationships and enhance your overall well-being. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.